Hello and welcome to another episode of Just In Time Worlds with your host, Marie Mullaney. Today, I want to talk about healing magic and its impact on a fantasy world and how to build it into your magic system. If you like this kind of world building content, please do consider smashing that subscribe button. And if you really like it and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can hit my Ko-fi page or you can read my book in Kindle Unlimited or purchase it in audiobook or print format. Okay, enough of that. Let's crack on with healing magic. Let's start with why you need healing magic. As an author, you want to be able to do terrible things to your characters. As a game master, you want to put characters into life-threatening situations and have them fear for the life of their character. But next session or next book or next chapter, you want those characters to be ready to go again. And well, Modern medicine doesn't work that way, never mind what people had access to in the faux Middle Ages that most of us play in or write in. Therefore, you need some way of getting those characters to be combat ready again. This has also become more and more prevalent as video games have risen as the means by which we consume a lot of fantasy content. Nobody wants to play a video game where every time you die, every time you get a scratch, you go right back to the start and start all over again. Or a video game where if you get injured, it takes five, six days for you to heal. That's just not a viable gaming model. All of this has resulted in the rise of healing systems in fantasy worlds. But what impact does healing have on fantasy cultures? What impact do the different models have on your magic system? Let's dive deeper into models of healing magic. The first model of healing magic that I want to discuss is the your best self model of healing magic. That is how I define D&D &D healing magic. Something happens to you, a spell is cast on you like cure wounds or cure disease and it's all better. The wound just goes away magically. It was just a flesh wound. You're fine. You have Ebola and somebody casts cure disease on you and bam, just like that. All better. This model is most common in D&D and in video games. And it also normally includes some kind of potion based or item based component. So, if you don't happen to have a cleric or a bard or some other caster type nearby that can cast healing spells on you, you can pop a potion and boom, you're cured of whatever is wrong with you. This is the healing model that I feel takes the least into consideration the dramatic impact that it has on its society. And it is one of the big gripes that I have with Dungeons and Dragons. Let's say 10% of the population become adventurers. Of that 10%, 25% are some kind of healers. Do you know how much healing that is? How many people have access to healing magic at that point? Why is there any form of illness or injury in D&D? There should be a population explosion. Childhood diseases, gone. Things like the Black Death in Europe that killed 25% of the population never happen. Wars, psh, you drop down, you get back up again. It is the most impactful magic system. And normally it is the one that is completely brushed over by the world creators. Oh, no, no, people still get ill. Like we haven't had a population explosion. People still have bad teeth. Bad teeth. Really? Really? How? Just how? How does this logically make sense? Every D&D &D world should be effectively a post-scarcity medical wonder of a world. And the fact that they're not speaks to the fact that D&D &D is more and more video game orientated and does not consider the impact of its magic system on its world. <sighs> okay, rant over. I am sorry. Back to your best self healing systems. If this kind of magic exists in your world and works with your magic system, and it is common, you really need to think about 
what kind of society this is. Because what it should be is a society that more closely mirrors our modern day than a society that mirrored the medieval time period. Bear in mind that people died early and young during the medieval time period because of diseases, because even a scratch could take septic and you could die from the wound. The lack of hygiene bred diseases. It bred wounds that festered. If you commonly can heal these things by a simple trip to the temple, you will not have this kind of situation. You will have a large population and a growing one with all of the political ramifications of a large population. All of those reasons are the reasons why I did not choose this model for my world when I was deciding what kind of healing system I wanted. So the model that I chose is the speed things along model. You take the natural healing of the body, and you make it faster. So let's say you break your arm. That break has to be set before it can be healed. Because if you heal it before you set it, what happens is it heals crooked. So you have like a pull of your arm sticking up like this, and the healing makes it heal like that. But if you set it properly, you can then speed the healing along. If you think my world sounds interesting, my first book, The Hidden Blade, is available on Kindle Unlimited and as an audiobook. Links down below. Trudy Canavan has the same kind of model in her Magician series. The difference between her model and mine is that she allows mages to heal everybody using this model. So they can clean a wound, set a bone, and then speed the healing. I only allow mages to affect themselves in this way. And that changes the level of impact that this healing model has on society. In Trudy Canavan's series, at the end of the first series, and don't worry, this is not really a spoiler, magicians are commonly healing everybody in the city of Imarden and in the villages that they are attendant on and so on. This obviously makes magic more acceptable to the population at large, but it also means that the general health level of your population rises with all the attendant effects. So you have larger populations, your populations are generally happier and healthier and live longer, but that also does have some downsides in terms of the burgeoning population and how you feed them and so on and all of the effects that come with larger populations. In my world, where it is more restricted and only mages can heal themselves in this way, it is obviously only the small elite part of the population that have access to this magic. And this leads to a different kind of problem, which is jealousy of the elite and a rising tension between the general population that does not have access to this magic and the small elite portion that does. So depending on what approach you want to follow in terms of your society and your culture, you can pick to either have this kind of speed up magic available to a portion of your population or your whole population. I feel that one other model that I need to talk to along these lines is the Harry Potter style of healing magic. Harry Potter has got specific spells for specific injuries. So what this really translates into is when your doctors are in fact magicians. So you have a cure for when dark magic hits you. You have a potion for when all the bones in your arms disappear. You have a potion that you drink for mandrake injuries. And so you have various cures for specific ailments. So in order to be a healer in that world, you have to study as though you were a doctor. You have to know the ailments, you have to know the cures for them, and you have to address those specific illnesses. This kind of model works really well if what you want to do is have a modern style doctor involved in curing people with specific magical ailments that work with the flavor of your magic system. So those are specific magical approaches to healing injuries. But there are non-magical approaches that are used in fantasy as well. The first example that I want to highlight here comes from Mercedes Lackey. In her world, 
she has got healers that specifically act like therapists from our world. They address people who have what amounts to PTSD. What I found interesting about this is this kind of therapist should really exist in every fantasy world. If you think of the horrors that you put characters through both in novels and as a game master, the psychological scars of those characters should be pretty impressive. And the fact that they don't need counselling really speaks to us ignoring that aspect of mental health rather than them actually not needing counselling. What Mercedes Lackey has is these healers of the mind and the body. So they look at the mind and the body in a holistic sense and approach healing from that aspect. And specifically, I'm thinking here of the characters Amber Drake and Silver Fox. Both of those saw clients and in the context of Mercedes Lackey's work, they also often had intimate relationships with these clients. Not always, but sometimes even up to the point of sex. It was a very interesting approach to looking at mental health from a intimacy perspective of the body as well as the unburdening of the mind. If you've seen this kind of therapy style of healing anywhere else in fantasy, do let me know in the comments below. And let's talk about Anne McCaffrey and her book Moretta's Ride. Now, I am going to spoil Moretta's Ride for you. It is a Dragon Rider of Pern novel, so if you haven't read it and you do want to, please do skip ahead now. Moretta's Ride is a book set in Pern's past, and a plague is sweeping through the world of Pern. Part of the book is the Healer's Hall rediscovering the science of vaccination. So once they've figured out how to make a vaccine, they then need to distribute this vaccine. And that is where Moretta comes in. So she is a dragon rider. Dragon riders in Pern can teleport. The, the dragons can teleport. Moretta takes the vaccines from hold to hold, distributing them across the population of Pern. What makes this a very interesting approach is that it is science-based, but it addresses fantastical elements. How do you distribute a vaccine? How do you make a vaccine without technology? And then how do you distribute it far enough for it to be effective? So that's a very interesting exploration of how to use more modern healing techniques, more science healing techniques, and combine them with your fantastical elements by having your dragon riders distribute the vaccine. And then the last example that I want to discuss in terms of healing magic is that of the Black Company. In Glenn Cook's The Black Company, the narrator is Croker, and Croker is the physician of a mercenary company. Now, he heals people by means of sewing wounds together, giving them normal medicine for diseases, and looking after their hygiene. But sometimes Croker runs out of the point where he can actually cure people, and then there is a magician called One Eye who can offer him assistance with magical healing. Now, in the Black Company, the magic system is very soft. What exactly One Eye can and can't do isn't something that I'm really going to explore. But the point is that if you have a physician and a magician working together, that also gives you access to the character dynamic going on there. They can either be good friends, as Croker and One Eye are, and work together to save the patient's life, or they can be rivals, with the magician and the physician competing with each other for who can cure people, who can keep going the longest, who can identify the actual problem and hence fix it, etc. So it gives you a lot of character development that you can then engage with in the healing process of the characters. If you like this kind of exploration of how magic influences characters, please do hit the thumbs up button. Okay, so we now have a comprehensive understanding of the models used in healing. In terms of assessing the impact that healing magic has on your society, the elements that you have got to consider is what impact does it have on diseases? And if there is a large decrease in diseases, what impact does that have on your population? And when your population increases, 
What does that do to your culture? Wounds. If wounds just close up, if you never have septic infections, that will also increase the life and happiness of your population. And lastly, war. If healing is prevalent in your society, wars will change and they will change dramatically. You will get into a situation where you have to one shot kill people to put them down permanently. Or your healers will become the primary target of the war. And you will have to spend energy defending them. And I've discussed elements of this in my Magical Warfare video, which you can check out in the info card. But it is definitely worth thinking about the impact that your healing system has on war. Of course, as always, in terms of designing any part of a magic system, give a lot of consideration to how you build it. Remember, you want to build on top of your system before building a whole new system. So like I built on top of my existing bodily control magic, I built my healing magic. Trudy Canavan's magic is an extension of her system as well. Harry Potter is a bit all over the place because it's a pretty soft magic system. But most healing magics tie back to some form of magical system. Even D&D &D ties back to divine magic and prayers. So don't just design a unique system just for your healing magic unless that is going to be a primary focus. Remember Brandon Sanderson's rule? Build more before building new. And that is my take on healing magic in a fantasy world. I hope that you enjoyed that episode of Just In Time Worlds. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you did. If you really enjoyed this and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can buy my book, The Hidden Blade by Marie M. Mullaney, or you can hit my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off donation, buy a membership, or even buy a product.